Yeah, uh, so first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. I've attended, I think, almost all of the Hamburg Gaia events. I lived in Bremen now for uh, six years, but I've lived in Hamburg for 15 years, so this is like still it's like my home, right? So I live in Bremen, and just we're about to talk about um, football or soccer. I've had this presentation in the US a couple of times, so I, I tend to say soccer because in the US they get confused when they say football. Um, who here is Pauli? Has Paul? Good. Um, right. So this is going to be um, mainly a business side talk. It's a little bit of a story of also how you know the the road to AI for um, traditional company like uh, like a grown professional soccer team. And I think there are a couple of takeaways that you can also apply to um, you maybe you know talking uh, internally to to your managers trying uh, to convince them to do AI, also to potential clients. So but, uh, first of all, we are a uh, quite small AI company based in Bremen. We are eight people right now. Um, we do a couple of interesting things. So Scout is the intelligent scouting solution. We're going to talk about that today. Um, we are uh, using um, some components of IBM Watson also here. That may be the reason why IBM selected me as IBM champion. Also, we have a couple of other things, but they thought it's good enough. It's a great honor, so I'm, I'm flattered by it. We work with um, Rasa AI in Berlin to um, build an intelligent chatbot solution called Jai Agent. So, um, who, who here knows Rasa AI? All the others, go to look it up. Um, it's the coolest open source and a new um, dialogue management platform, really, hands down. And um, so they use not only AI to to um, predict the intent, so what the user actually wants to ask, and then route him to a fixed dialogue tree, which is going to fail miserably all the time if you have a little bit a more complex model. So there's no fixed dialogue tree there. There's an LSTM which predicts the next action, which, which has a lot of benefits, really. So that's really interesting. And we built a complete management platform for the Rounder stack. And so we're going to release that in like two weeks. It's going to be super cheap so everyone can afford it. And then you can really build enterprise projects with that. So that's pretty cool. Rather than being a Rouser hero, I'm super proud of that as well. Uh, because we also contribute to the, to the library. Um, we've built something called the Giant Dispatcher, which is basically an email classification system. Um, for a help desk, we built that together with um, uh, quite a large company who have a lot of help desk, internal help desk emails incoming. And I'll tell you one thing, email classification is a hard thing to do. Why? Because emails do not only contain the actual message, they contain signatures, disclaimers, forwarded emails, attachments. You know, such a lot of noise in there, so all the standard approaches we tried failed miserably. And for those of you who, uh, who are in, in the know, we ended up with um, training our own supervised embedding and feeding that into LSTMs with a classification layer at the end, and that worked out fine. Um, we are currently working on um, a computer vision project together with um, a company which is a sub-company of Securitas, so we are a security company. Um, it's a video surveillance um, alarm headquarter, so they get a couple of thousand video alarms every day, and they have to watch all these videos, because it might be a security breach. 99.9% .9 of the time it's a, the branch from a tree moving because it's windy, it's a cat passing by, a spider, something, you know, or nothing at all. You wonder, you know, why did this trigger off the alarm? So we try to uh, classify these emails in this is a security breach or not, which is actually also quite hard because you must not have any false negatives. That one video where maybe you can, even as a human, it's hard to see, but maybe there are two legs walking in the dark somewhere. It could be a person. You must not miss that one. So what we do is we um, classify the videos where, uh, where we are really sure, like 50%, 50 to 60%, we just automatically classify. And the rest of them gets prioritized. So um, the people who watch these videos do not watch them in a linear fashion as they come in. But if we think this is that could be this is a high probability that there's a personal security breach, watch this first, right? So really interesting as well. 
Um, one thing that's um, not yet on here is um, because it's quite new, we also work on that. I mean, most of the companies now, they seem to not work on AI, but digitizing their, uh, their mail, their, their incoming mail, right? And actually, that's also something that you can do with AI. So we work together with a health insurance company um, that the, all the daily mail gets processed um, at the ETSC in, in Hannover and uh, more than two million letters incoming. So there's a whole team of uh, people who are opening the, the letters and uh, yeah, getting all the, the metal things out there. And, and then it's ready to get scanned, but before uh, the letters can be scanned, they need to be um, classified also. And uh, because otherwise the, the OCR system that they have uh, fails miserably. <laughs> So in that classification is something that needs to really qualify people because um, sometimes the documents um, uh, uh, have just one word which is different and from, apart from that, it's, they're completely the same. Sometimes they look different, sometimes you know, so they, you really have to have qualified people to do this classification. And here we work, on, again for those who don't know, we work with a combination. Uh, they finally catch that, that truly is no wrong. Did you hear what I said? Okay, so what we do here is um, we combine the convolutional neural network, so computer vision, um, then we OCR the text, uh, classify the text, and both of these results we feed into a third neural network, which then has the classification result and tells us whether or not we can be confident enough to actually uh, feed that into the OCR. If not, again, we have an interface that we give to the qualified people, where we say, this is our suggestion, if it's right, then you just hit enter and go on. Or um, classify that. Last but not least, we do uh, JIDA.de, the German language AI portal. So here at TPI, everything is in English. Our experience is if you uh, talk to companies everywhere below the DAX 30, and you talk to the IT department, you tell them, you know, you have to get up to speed with AI, go do this tutorial, do this course. Oh, it's in English. Uh, no. Yeah, so, uh, well, so this is why we came up with the German language AI portal, where we explain. How, we will, uh, how deep learning works, what transfer learning is, and uh, how working better works, and, and all that. Good, so that's what we do. Let's talk about football. Does football start to need AI? The very interesting part of this, you, you know, you ask this question, um, especially like if you are in a more football centric audiences, you immediately have two camps. One camp says, uh, these laptop coaches, right? <laughs> they, they don't know anything about the game. I, I can recognize a good player when I see him, right? And at the other hand, the, the, the laptop coach camp, they you know, of course, you need all the data and all that. And the funny thing is, we haven't even begun to explain to them what AI can do, right? So this is a little bit of the journey also we had with the team we are working uh, together. So you start by explaining, okay, what can AI do? And I personally, I like this definition by Vivian Ming. So AI is any brief expert judgment, faster, cheaper, and better than the human. It's a little bit provocative, but um, from my experience, it's mostly true. And the interesting uh, part in, in this sentence is like every single word really has a, a distinct meaning here. So we're talking about brief expert judgments. So brief judgments. And Renew says everything you can do is in a second or two, but not like uh, some guy from the street, but a trained expert, like a radiologist with 10 years of experience, right? He can look at your x ray and can tell you within two seconds if you have a problem or not, right? A machine can do that too. And it's not only radiologists, it's really it's any, that's the any, any business domain, right? So, um, yeah, it's. Uh, Really, any business domain. And then, of course, it's software. Come on, it's faster. Of course, it's cheaper because it scales so easily. And in many areas, it's already better than humans in its narrow niches, right? Computer vision already since a couple of years. So that's what AI can do. And if, if you explain that to normal people or uh, you know, software guys, you get like uh, three standard reactions. This always, always you explain to people, you get this reaction. Of course, fascination. Who, who wouldn't be fascinated, right? It's fascinating. Then you, then you have the disbelievers. No, AI, this, oh, this doesn't work. You know, it will never work. Um, actually, my, my, my mother, right? 
And she, yeah, Google, I, I told you about how Google Translate is now so much better, and it's using LSTMs, and it works really good. No, I tried it the other day, and it was like not working really, at all. I was like, what did she try to do? And she, she worked for the European Commission in, in Turkey. She's not from Turkey herself, so she needed to translate some Turkish text to German. So she tried to translate Turkish to German. I said, okay, when was that? Yeah, like four or five years ago. You know, this disbelievers and that, but we, of course, we are hammer guy. Everybody knows what AI can do, right? So we, have, we don't have disbelievers here. But I tell you one thing. We are always quick to say, yeah, you know, what the radiologists can do, or the taxi drivers, or, you know, uh, attorneys. Yeah, all this can be automated, you know, these guys are in trouble, but what I do, no. So but what, what is it that you do every day? Can you describe what you do in like a couple of sentences? If you can, there's a very high probability that a large part of that can be automated to in the very near future. Which in return means, if you have no idea at all what you're doing all day, then you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> And then last but not least, the one you really, really begin to, to grasp that, that concept, you get fear, right? That was also one of the reactions we got from that soccer team. The guy said it was like, so they will not need us anymore in the future? All our jobs are gone. And you know, this is this is the environment in which you uh, act when you try to sell AI product uh, AI projects to companies. Uh, or when you try to sell them maybe internally in your company, this is the, the range you have. So how do you proceed? And my experience is the best thing you can do is to demonstrate value. So from the outset, show people what you can do. So by some, you know, a, 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 a row of accidents, I somehow uh, got invited to a meeting with the sports director from this team. He had heard that we can do some crazy shit with AI and he was curious and invited us, right? Um, so in preparation for the meeting, I decided to use a couple of standard API tools to analyze who this guy is, because soccer scouting is all about analyzing humans, right? So um, I analyzed this guy, and right after saying hello, I straight on, I confronted him with what I had found. So the first thing I did was, um, I, I made a personality profile using Watson Personality Insights. I said, look, I, I, I um, fed it with a couple of recent interviews I found and some social media stuff. And I said, look, you know what? This is you. We also have a point of view. Yeah, look. So and then I said, okay, what are the, the outstanding features here? You can see here, this is all very low. There are two large bumps. One of them is curiosity. That's the problem curiosity, and then we have also here uh, challenge also, and somewhere was also here openness to, to change over here, also large ones. That's probably why the guy invited me, right? And then at the other side, you know, these are all pretty large. Here's a very small one, orderliness. And I, I looked around his office. Could be true. <laughs> so, so, right, so I, I got this information from just parsing interview data um, through what's personality insights. Um, of course, I could have also read through these interviews, like in depth, trying to understand what are the, the key concepts of, of this guy, what is he all about. But you know what, Watson can do this too. So I had Watson and you extract the key concepts uh, together with uh, sentiment. So the key. Uh, the key concepts in this interview were this guy has his dream job with a positive sentiment, he does not like irregular working, <laughs> negative sentiment, he likes a holistic approach, and he does not like psychological tricks. So good, I, I played over, right? <laughs> so this is what Watson thinks about you, what do others think about you? So I ran this guy's Google Watch Analytics for social media. And uh, he get uh, the, a, a sentiment percentage, positive and negative sentiment. And the interesting thing is, you can, for example, click on, on the negative sentiment, and then you get all the negative mentions. So you can see actually what kind of negative things are people saying about a specific person. 
And maybe this is something you want to take a look at before you buy a player for 10 or 20 million. You know, what are the, the, the possible downsides? Could be interesting, right? Um, and by the way, you know, we can do that for the whole team, of course. We can compare the team. Um, we can see what's, what's going on. So <laughs> that could be interesting. I can also see who talks about your players and where are your players being talked about. Again, using what's on the for social media. For, so I, I needed to, to cut off here. Actually, so each line is a website and each color is a player. I needed to cut off the website scene because then you would have very easily seen which team is this because until one and a half weeks ago we were not allowed to say for who we were, but we can say it now. I will say it. Um, so but I can tell you that this first line here is transfermarkt.de. So maybe that's an important piece of information, knowing um, if the rumors about your players on transfer mark, on, on transfer mark grow or, or shrink or what, what's going on. And also on a couple of other sites, it's probably very interesting. Alright, so you know, we got to a point where the guy obviously was uh, interested enough to say, you know, this sounds like we could probably um, uh, need your help. So then the next thing we always do in projects like that is, okay, let's show me what you do. Show me how you work, and then I can tell you how we can probably help. And um, so the first thing I learned is, so what, what, what do football scouts usually do? Their core job is they uh, go and watch players play. So they, they travel to matches, watch players play, and then after that, they write up a report. For each player on the field, they write up a report. In their very specific scouting jargon, uh, in the beginning I had a hard time to understand all of it, really. You know, after some time, I, I kind of understood it. So, the team we work for, they have a database of more than 100,000 of these reports. That's very, very valuable information because it's in human language, unstructured. It contains, you know, human language is very good at also describing um, ambivalent um, features of play. You know, it's a very good technique, but then also you need to mistake there, and you know, a very good attitude, but at the end you lost his concentration. How, how would you handle that on a scale from one, one to ten? You know, so language is a powerful tool, but so they, they sit on this pile of one hundred thousand reports. What do they do with it? So the first thing, basically, and so the first idea we have is okay, we can work with these reports. Then we looked, so where are these, these reports, right? Where is your data? And they were already using a scouting platform, but that platform really had not been updated for the last 10 years. It was like the front end was, oh my god. And um, it was from the, onset, to, from the onset totally clear, there's no chance that we can plug in AI just as a plugin into this platform. So that was kind of the birth of um, a completely new scouting platform called Jai Scout that we built. So we, we ended up building a complete scouting solution for that. And um, yeah, and I, I will just quickly show you what this looks like. This is basically, so the whole aim of this platform is to enable the scouts um, to focus on their on their core job, which is watching players, and all the organization around it, and all the, the standard mundane tasks, um, these need to be as easy as possible. And the call is a little bit hard to read here. So what, this is a, a dashboard, and uh, you can see here they, they can see what their um, their scout colleagues have been up to, right? So which players have been analyzed, which match reports have been written. Um, here they can see their um, upcoming calendar dates. So, and the, the color here indicates whether or not they um, uh, need a ticket for that. So, also scouts, if they go and watch matches, they need to buy tickets or get tickets from the uh, <coughs> from from the other teams. And um, here you can click on the, the match plan. You will see that later. And after you have seen a match, automatically you will be listed here so that you don't forget to write that report. It uh, obviously also happened sometimes in the past that people just forget to do that, right? So that's not a possibility anymore. So that you can select a game. We can hi automatically highlight games where, uh, where players are involved, which the team thinks are interesting, right? Um, 
and then if you click on that game, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to that game, or you can uh, tell another person to go to that game. Um, you can set your ticket status, you can write, write a, a comment like, okay, please go and watch this game and specifically look at that guy, right, what he's doing, so, so give jobs to other people. Um, also here we have the, the green highlighting always means this is a player which they think is interesting. Of course this is all demo data. We have a little radar button here where you can click because if, if you're going to the match anyway, this will show you the matches around this in a certain area so that if, when you're in the area you might as well go and watch these matches as well. Right? Um, and now comes the interesting part. So after the game they begin to write up these reports. And um, one thing is that also for, for players where they don't write a report, we also capture that information because if that player was not worthy enough to the, that the scout write, uh, writes a report, that's also a piece of information you want to know. So then what, what we did is we trained a custom instance of what's natural language understanding to um, understand that specific scouting jargon and extract from that um, the relevant features so that, and the relevant features are here, 12 different features. Um, I'm just going to read them in German. Ausdauer, Effizienz, Körper, Präsenz, Spielerisch, Team, uh, Technik, Tempo, <coughs> Trend, der Entwicklung, Zweikampf, Torgefahr, Einstellung. So, Attitude, Technik, uh, Game Understanding and, and all that. And here we are able to extract um, positive mentions as well as negative mentions for all of these, all of these features, um, which has a couple of benefits. So the, the first benefit is, of course, you can make a nice visualizations. So especially for players which they have been following for a couple of years, you can imagine they have like 50 reports down below. You can read through all of these. Yes, if you have the time, but you can also just look at the summary. And then, of course, um, this suddenly makes this, uh, this pile of gold with 100,000 reports searchable in a meaningful way. So you can filter and say, okay, look, who have, which players have we seen last year where, where we, as the scouts, say, this guy had a great technique, uh, his tackle is very good, his attitude is very good, and he's fast. And then, of course, you can combine that with um, all the standard performance data and, uh, you know, it needs to be a defender or whatsoever. So we, then we, we can combine these. So um, that's the first part of that. And then when the team is uh, really interested in a certain player, and usually they have some sort of short list for a certain position they want, they want to get a player for, we do a deep player analysis. And here you can see all the stuff I showed you before, the personality insights stuff, the social media analytics, together with some tag clouds, uh, some performance data here. And that's basically just a, a boiled down two page management handout, which actually they like to print that. <laughs> we needed to, to implement a, a, a function that they could print it out nicely. <laughs> and they, so that the, the management, when they sit together, that they can have their handouts, right? Um, so, yeah, this is basic stuff. But it's something where, you know, actually training that model to understand this model jargon and, and extracting the features, that was like, I don't know, two weeks. You know, very easy, but it's very valuable and it can be applied to um, a lot of different things. One, one dirty secret I can reveal here is um, that actually Watson, like AWS, also has a free tire that you can use. And for the for what's the LU, the custom models we use. Um, so you can have one custom model for free, one instance of what's knowledge to do for free, 30,000 requests per month for free, which in some means we are not paying anything. So we have a fully customized model. That was one of the main reasons also why we use Watson. So we build a lot of custom deep learning stuff. But it, that, that was just so easy and we, we don't need to take care of this. Um, it's a service that runs in the cloud. It's being maintained, it's updated by IBM and we don't pay. <laughs> so well, why not? So what's next? We are currently, we have already built a beta version to um, predict market values for players. We are using a data set with more than 400 data points per player. 
soft and hard um, data points. Also, for example, um, just changing the team for, for which a player plays changes his market value, right? And we have a lot of stuff like that also in there. And then what, what, you, can, what you can do is basically you can also start to predict future player market values. For, because usually you buy a player um, because you think he still has some potential to, to develop. And then you can do stuff like, okay, if this player played for our team and we are able to um, better his tackle rate by 1.5% points, what would his market value in one year be? Right? So and then that, it's kind of useful to, to, to help the management with decisions and buying plays for really tens of millions, right? And of course we have a trained uh, version of Watson who understands scouting jargon. Why not go to uh, certain specific websites where people talk a lot about new talents, local newspapers, forums, and uh, scan these websites for the features, features that we are able to extract and uh, see um, what names pop up and then just tell the scouts maybe you take a look at this guy, right? And then last but not least, the whole grail for soccer scouting is of course to predict future player performance. That's hard to do because there are not many examples in the data of there are just so many Neymars and Messi's and you know. Uh, so you need to be able to learn from very little data. I think um, the the base technology is there already. We are just lacking um, good data. So if we had on every um, training uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, if you try to imagine on every, every match court, uh, we had the same camera systems and all the players would wear, um, like, like they do in, in the NFL for example, in the NFL, all the players would wear vests with GPS and blood pressure and everything, and uh, also track 24-7, then I think it would be very viable with the technology today to build uh, a scouting system that can do that at least better than a human. Right? So, uh, but that, that will come uh, in a couple of years. So, like I said, one and a half weeks ago, we were um, allowed to, to finally uh, publicly release the team we were working for. Um, so, for the, the, the larger crowd, <laughs> I asked before, we were happy about this, so it's better brain, obviously, um, who, who we work for, yes, <laughs> in the back. So, However, this solution is our solution. It's not a better random solution. They rented it from us. We are free to provide it to other um, teams. Um, we are currently looking in, in, into that also. And um, yeah, so you know, why not also give it to a team from Hamburg? However, I think from a moral stand point of view, uh, it would probably be tough to give it to the last <laughs> But um, we, we probably get, get into trouble with the better guys. <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's, that's what we do with, uh, with the scouting. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to your questions. <laughs>